Welcome to Electra Online. When you face this type of problem, it's a little bit more challenging because you do not know the final state of the mixture, where in this case you're mixing ice and steam together. So let's read the problem and see why this is difficult. We have 200 grams of ice at minus 20 degrees Celsius and it's mixed with 20 grams of steam at 100 degrees Celsius. What is the final state and what is the final temperature and if not all of the ice is melted, what is the fraction of the ice that is melted? So here, we don't know what the final state will be. Will the final state be that everything is ice? Will the final state be that everything is steam? Or maybe it is water? Or maybe it's a steam and water mixture? Or maybe it's an ice and water mixture? We really don't know. And so the best thing to do is to take each component separately and see how much heat it would take to go taking the cold object to go from where it is to the boiling point of water and then we take the hot item, the steam here, and how much heat would be released to get it all the way down to zero degrees Celsius. So when we do that, we have to take the ice and go through three stages. First we take the ice from minus 20 to zero and then we take the mass times the specific heat of ice times the change in temperature. It'll take 2000 calories. All these numbers are in calories. So let me just put calorie down, they're all in calories. And then we need to melt the ice, well it's 200 grams and it takes 80 calories per gram to melt it, so 16,000 calories. And then if we took that melted ice, which is now cold water at 0 degrees Celsius, how much heat would it take to get it all the way up to 100 degrees Celsius? Well we take the, the, the mass times the specific heat of water times the change in the temperature, another 20,000 calories to get it all the way up to boiling point. Now we have steam. We have 20 grams of it, and to condense the steam to water at 100 degrees Celsius, we multiply times the latent heat of vaporization, and it takes 10,800 calories to condense the steam into water. And then to take that all the way down to zero, we take 20 grams times the specific heat of water times the change in temperature, it takes another 2,000 calories to get it all the way down to zero. So now you have to look at it and say, well, where do we think it's going to end up? Notice that to melt all the ice, you need 2,000 calories to get the ice up to zero, and another 16,000 calories to melt all the ice, so you need 18,000 calories to melt the ice. Do you have 18,000 calories available within the steam? Well, when the steam gets all the way down to zero, it will only release 12,800 calories, which is not enough to melt all the ice because that requires 18,000 calories. So therefore, you can conclude that you'll end up with some sort of ice water mixture. So, it's an ice water mixture, final temperature is 0 degrees Celsius. Now you need to figure out what the fraction of the ice is that is melted. So now you need the equation where again you say heat gain equals heat lost. Remember that all the delta T's must be positive on both sides of the equation. So here on the left side, the ice is gaining heat to go from minus 20 to 0 and it's gaining heat to melt a fraction of the ice. F represents a fraction between 0 and 1 of the ice that's melted and that equals all the heat released by the steam when, it's, when it goes from vapor to, to water, that's to, conde the con con so to condense the water and then here that's the amount of heat that's released when the water goes from 100 down to 0 degrees Celsius. At that point the heat exchange stops. And now all we need to do is solve this equation for the fraction of the ice that is melted. The rest is just algebra. And there you go, that is how you then figure it out. Turns out that about two-thirds of the ice was melted.